Today I want to tell you the story about how I went from making my living delivering pizzas to being someone who makes films every day. I, I have no intention on that title being clickbait at all. Um, I really was delivering pizzas um, in I think 2000 and 11 and in 2019, about to be 2020, I make a living full-time owning and operating a small production company. I wanted to make this series uh, because so much of what I've learned has been on this platform on YouTube. I thought it would be really great to be able to give back to the community that kind of brought me to where I am. Um, I have no film school under my belt. I've never taken a film class. The only thing I've done is be on YouTube and learn everything I know from running cameras to how to run QuickBooks all on this platform. I've learned everything I know from other people doing exactly what I'm doing today. So I thought it would be really cool to, to be able to offer a hand to anybody in my position a few years ago, or even people who are doing the same things that I'm doing now. I think a lot of this series of videos will rely on you and your questions. Um, so please, if you have any questions, if you wanna know how I've done anything, if you just have any feedback for me, please leave a comment below. To break into the actual story of how I went from pizza to film, um, I, I do have a college degree. The degree is in painting. I do appreciate that I have that degree. I do think it helps me uh, just understand the creative process and how to make frames and understanding light. Uh, but for the most part, having that college degree is not something I put to use every single day necessarily. The experience that I've earned running the company that I have and in making films for as many years as I have been really kind of culminates in a lot of like self-taught lessons, a lot of bumps along the road, um, a lot of you know lessons that were hard learned lessons and I'm sure I have a ton of lessons ahead of me to learn. In 2010, I graduated from college with a Bachelor's of Fine Arts. And when you graduate with a Bachelor of Fine Arts and you're in a lot of debt, you go move back in with your parents, which is exactly what I did. I ended up living with them for a couple of years. I got a job at the same pizza place I was in before I left for college. Um, I was making pizzas and delivering them daily. You can imagine being someone who just acquired, I think I was at like $80,000 of debt for the degree that I had, not a smart move. I definitely don't uh, advise anyone going to debt to get a college degree, but I come from a pretty working class family. My mom was a teacher, my entire life, public school teacher. My dad started as a, a factory worker and then sent himself back to college and became someone who works in the IT field but we didn't have a lot of money. And so I went into some debt to get that degree. Thankfully, I do have parents that were able to take me in and I, I lived with them for a few years while I worked. After about two years of that and looking for a job like nonstop, I think I probably put in several hundred job applications. Nothing was happening. Uh, luckily, I had a friend who was moving home from Dallas, Texas. He was moving back to Kansas City, Missouri. He had just gotten a job at a very small post-production company and he asked me if I would be interested in doing an internship. At this point, I'd already done two internships and I think I let my pride get kind of the best of me there, which was not a smart choice. I turned him down, uh, but a week later he came back and said like, I really think you should try this. And so I went ahead and did it. I made like $8 an hour. It was, you know, by all means, not a, not a livable wage, but it was a foot in the door. That night I kind of, went back to something I hadn't done in a long time. I started shooting little home movies and stuff when I was very, very young, and I hadn't ever thought I could make a career of it. But the company that was gonna hire me asked me to, to show them how I could edit. So I recut a little trailer on that. They were like, okay, well, you obviously have some skills in editing and you understand how to use the programming. So why don't you come and work for us? I started working for them. I was actually ended up being at that company for about two years. I was an intern for a few months and then they eventually hired me as a full-time motion designer. I had no idea how to do motion design. I didn't even know really what it was. The last time I'd even done anything relatively similar was back when Macromedia Flash was a thing. Um, I don't know if you remember cartoons like Homestar Runner and stuff like that, the keyframe based animation. But I jumped on YouTube, uh, I just started doing some research and I basically faked my way through the first year of my job. Don't fake it so much that you will end up getting yourself into a bad position, but you know, pretty much everyone working in film had to figure out their own path. Some people go to film school, 
Some people don't go to film school. Some people know people in the industry and other people like me, for instance, I, I literally have no one in my family that's ever even had a creative career, let alone one in film. So I kind of had to make it up as I went. After a few years of that, there was a company in town called Barkley, which is a, an advertising agency in Kansas City, Missouri. They actually were a company that I had applied for dozens of times back when I was living with my parents. Through some weird mix of fate and bad luck for the company I was with, they ended up closing. Barkley hired me to come in and be a motion designer for them. At this point, I'd had my dream job, which was pretty incredible. Um, I think I was 25 years old at the time. Working at this particular agency was kind of the top of the heap. Um, I spent four years there learning more, more on YouTube, more a little bit faking it as I went. I just kind of kept building knowledge and building um, you know, self-esteem as a creator. I also started this very small t-shirt company that actually kind of took off in 2014 and 2015. And while I was doing that, it kind of taught me how to keep some books. And I learned about business insurance and I learned about how to get a hold of an accountant. And I learned, you know, what it takes to run a business. And after a couple of years of doing that, I realized like I could take all of this knowledge that I'd had running a business and apply it to film and run my own film business. Um, so after four years of being at Barclay, I told my boss one morning that um, I had found a pretty good opportunity to go freelance. And I've been out on my own for two and a half years. The first year I was completely based out of our apartment. Um, I worked off of my computer in a second bedroom. And in year two, I bought this office. Well, I, I rent this office space where I work at this desk every day. Um, I'm a director mostly. I write and direct a lot of uh, commercial content and a lot of web content. I'm not the, the most savvy with cameras. I know there's plenty of other YouTube channels out there that you can learn everything you want to know about how every single camera and every single piece of new tech works. I'll link some of the people below that I watch most often and they, they give me a lot of really cool knowledge. There's plenty of that out there. What I wanted this channel to be was all of the other kind of gaps in knowledge that I wish I had known five years ago. Things like how to use QuickBooks. I'm not gonna teach you how to use QuickBooks, but I'm gonna tell you what it would take to run a business on it. Again, there's plenty of really great QuickBooks tutorials. Um, how to get business insurance, how to get your first job, those types of things. I think um, the little details that are often skipped in other YouTube channels are the things that I was, I'm most interested in teaching you guys about, or at least giving you some insight into how things have worked for me. It's not the only way that you can get a career as a filmmaker working for yourself, but I know that a few things along the way that have helped me kind of succeed could probably help you as well. So if you're interested in learning some of those lessons, um, click subscribe. Uh, leave a comment if you already have any questions about what it takes to run a company or, or, you know, work making videos for a living. I would love some input from you guys. I would love to know what you're interested in. It helps me be able to narrow this content down a bit. Starting a YouTube channel in the end of 2019, I'm obviously aware that there's so many great resources out there for filmmakers, and I didn't want to add more of the same conversation to the community. I wanted to add in some gaps that other channels which is, I think other channels could easily talk about as well, but they have such a great focus on the content that they're already making that maybe I'd be able to fill in some of those gaps. I think it's important when you find success to be able to bring up others around you. There's a good quote that comes to mind that I think about a lot, especially in a, in a world of being a freelance filmmaker, but the quote is that rising tides lift all ships. And I think it's important to lift up those around you because that's just what makes the community better. It will make me a better filmmaker. It will build a better community around me. So again, click subscribe. Um, I'll have a bunch of videos coming out. Some things to expect. I will do some breakdowns on some of the commercials that you can find on my channel or on the website that I'll also link below. Um, so a, a bunch of breakdowns. I also wanna spend some time talking about the things in filmmaking that are not necessarily always discussed. Insurance. Having business insurance is such a huge part of owning your own company that is kind of a no-brainer for a lot of folks. But for someone like me who I don't have any other entrepreneurs in my family, it was something that I had to learn on my own. And if I can make that a little bit easier for anybody, I would, I would really like to do that. Thank you for watching this video. Click subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks guys, see you on the next one.